Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be continuing with qualitative analysis. But for this one, our objective is to identify a salt. So you don't know which salt you are getting. Right? So we have two A and B. So for A and B, there are two different cations. Right? And we're going to identify cation A and B. And then we have a sample for the negative ion of the salt. So, as per usual, we are going to start with sodium hydroxide. So, I'm going to add a few drops of sodium hydroxide. It's a colorless solution, so we know it couldn't be copper, too. It would have been blue, it couldn't have been iron, too. It would have been green. And if it was iron tree, rusty brown, or red brown, whichever. So let's add a few drops of sodium hydroxide and we see we get a white precipitate. Alright? So if it's a white precipitate, it could be a number of ions lead, zinc, magnesium, calcium, alright? Aluminium. So we add it dropwise. So any of those ions could have been present. To the next sample of A, I'm, I am adding a few drops of ammonium hydroxide, aqueous ammonia solution, and I get a white precipitate. Alright? Now, if you get a white precipitate with ammonia, the positive ion, again, it's a colorless solution, so the colored ions are out of it. So, if you get a white precipitate, there's a particular ion. That does not form a precipitate with kels with aqueous ammonia. So if you go back to part one of the video, you can figure out which positive ion does not form a precipitate with aqueous ammonia. Alright? So for both solutions, when you add a, a few drops of sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide, we get a white precipitate. Alright? So let's add it in excess now. So let's add this sodium hydroxide. So we have the precipitate, right? Let's add it in excess and see if it starts to dissolve. The solution is a little concentrated, so it will take a lot. All right, let me put it in a beaker. Alright, but as you can see, it will have started to dip dissolve, but I'm going to pour it out inside of the beaker. Alright. Alright, so let me just keep a little in it. Alright. It's a little concentrated, so it will take more to dissolve it. Alright, but clearly... It deserves the precipitate, right? Let me go again. So, this is the precipitate, right? Let me pour some in. So, clearly, you can see the precipitate. I'm going to add excess soda my dioxide, right? And again, you can see that the precipitate has dissolved, all right? So when we add a few drops of it, we got a white precipitate with sodium hydroxide. When we add it in excess, all of the precipitate, it dissolved. So from that, again go back to part one, which ions can form a white precipitate with a few drops of sodium hydroxide, but then it dissolves in excess. There are only a few ions, right? So, continuing now, we add a few drops of the ammonium hydroxide. Alright, so just as before, alright, let me go. I'm adding the ammonium hydroxide in excess. Alright, so just like before, I'm going to throw out some of this in a beaker. Alright, so I've poured out some of it. Alright, so I'm going to add back a little of it now. To it all right so continue right 
I have the sample here poured out some of it. So let's add it in excess. That's a lot, right? So it is not dissolving. So for this cation, right? It formed a white precipitate in sodium hydroxide, but it dissolved in excess. However, with the ammonium hydroxide, it gives it the white precipitate, but it does not dissolve in excess. If you go back to the video in part one, you should be able to know which positive ion or ions can do this. Alright? So, how are we going to confirm it? We don't know which one it is yet. Because there is more than one ion that can do this. So what I'm going to do to confirm it. Just a second. Alright, so to confirm the presence of A, right? I'm going to add some more solution of A to a new test tube. Right? And I have a solution of potassium chloride. Right? So potassium iodide, potassium chloride, and potassium bromide, it can be used to confirm a particular, a, a particular ion. So you don't have to use potassium iodide to get the yellow precipitate. You can use potassium chloride or potassium bromide to get a white precipitate with a particular ion. You should know which ion that is. So if that ion is present, when I add potassium chloride, I should get a white precipitate. All right, and clearly we have our white precipitate. So we have confirmed the ion. So what happened? We added dropwise to sodium hydroxide, then in excess, it, we got a white precipitate, it dissolved in excess. So we know the ions that does that. To make some further deduction, we add the ammonium hydroxide, aqueous ammonia, same thing. Dropwise, we get a white precipitate. We add it in excess, but clearly it did not dissolve. On the left hand side is when something dissolves, right? It's completely colorless. Alright? No precipitate is there. But this one clearly you can see precipitate. Alright, so the precipitate does not dissolve in excess ammonia. There are a few ions that can do that. But of the ions that does not dissolve in excess ammonia solution, only one of them will give you a white precipitate with potassium chloride, potassium iodide, or potassium bromide. Any of those halide ions, if you add them to it, bromide and chloride get a white precipitate all right but if it was the iodide you would get a yellow precipitate all right so we get the white precipitate we know which ion that is or you should know so same thing again for b now all right so this is b solution b so going again Primary droppers. I'm going to add a, I'm going to add a few drops of sodium hydroxide. Let's see what happens. All right, there's the precipitate. All right, it's not as bright as the one before, but all right, we get the precipitate. Now let's add it in excess and see if it dissolves so i'm just going to add it in excess now nope it's not dissolving right so which ion can form a white precipitate with sodium hydroxide and it does not dissolve when you add it in excess right i'm going to do the same thing now with the ammonium, with the aqueous ammonia solution. Alright. Let me mix up these. Just a second.
So this is the aqueous ammonia. As we know, ammonia is kind of a bit of a pungent smell. All right. So again, we get a white precipitate with it. So let's go. Add it in excess. See? It does not di di dissolve in excess ammonia either. So only one of the ions will do this. So it forms a white precipitate that, that does not dissolve in excess ammonia. And it forms a white precipitate, I mean in sodium hydroxide. And it forms a white precipitate that does not dissolve in excess aqueous ammonia either. Good. So that's so. This is sample B. White precipitate that does not dissolve in both sodium hydroxide or aqueous ammonia. Which ion is that? And finally, now it's the negative ion. So for this negative ion, I am going to add a few drops of nitric acid so once you hear the reagent it will tell you which ion or it will indicate which ion I am testing for all right so I'm adding a few drops of nitric acid all right followed by silver nitrate And we get a white precipitate. All right. So it's very simple. Nitric acid followed by silver nitrate. If you get a white precipitate, you should know which ion is present. All right. The other video, I will do a video for all of the negative ions and explain what is happening. But for this one, it's an experiment for you to disc for you to basically identify the identity of the salt so for the salt right it's two salt a is a particular cation that is different from cation b so i identify cation a and cation b and then the anion so let's say the cation was the ammonium ion right and let's say this was the phosphate Iron, right then this salt would have been ammonium phosphate right so two salts cation a with the negative ion cation b with the negative ion so you should be able to tell me which two salts are present based on our observations here all right and that's it for this video so just to recap these three Solutions A or cation A, these two cation B, and this is the anion. Alright, that's it. Alright, so before I had ended the video, I should have had the ammonium hydroxide and showed you as well. So the negative ion, remember we had gotten a white precipitate. So when we a little is still there, alright. But when you add it, if the precipitate dissolves in aqueous ammonia, even though we, had, we could have concluded which one is present, we can also be more conclusive with the addition of the aqueous ammonia. So if the precipitate dissolves in the aqueous ammonia, then we know which ion it is. All right, so let me pour it out. A little is there. So we can pour out this and all right. So see it is there. Let me add some more ammonia. All right. Or I could just do it again and show you. All right. Let's pause it. All right. So here I have the negative ion. Let me add my few drops of nitric acid. All right. Followed by aqueous ammonia let me rinse out one of them all 
Alright. Not the acres of money I get. Silver nitrate. Where is silver nitrate? Alright. No, this something went wrong with that. I don't know. Something probably is contaminated. So just a second. Alright, ready again. So negative iron. Few drops of silver, not silver. Nitric nitric acid. Right? Then silver nitrate. Alright, so there we have the white precipitate. Good. And then we are going to add aqueous ammonia and watch what happens to the precipitate. So we see that the precipitate dissolve in aqueous ammonia. So we add silver nitrate, nitric acid, you get a white precipitate that dissolves in aqueous ammonia all right and that's it you can you should know which iron does that which negative iron so after this you can confirm which iron is present and the name of the salt all right so that's it now for this video and the experiment if you have any question feel free to ask in the comment section